Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video analysis for the US oil market for the trading week ending Friday the 10th of August. I expect that oil is in overall a consolidation, it's underway, it may last a total of about 13 to 21 weeks, if it ends in a Fibonacci 13 weeks then it's only going to continue for two more weeks, so that's entirely possible that we're getting toward the end of it. When it's done, I'm expecting the upward trend for US oil to continue. The consolidation should remain above 55.24. The target for it to end for its final low is about 61.12. Let's have a look at the monthly chart for oil. This is the only remaining Elliott Wave count that I have for oil because a very bearish alternate has been invalidated. My wave count sees from this high to this slope completed three wave structure, subdividing as a zigzag 5, 3, 5. If we see cycle wave B over here and cycle wave C beginning here, then cycle wave C is a complete five wave structure subdividing one, two, three, four, five. My bearish wave count saw cycle B over at the high up here, and so cycle C continuing with one, two, three, four, five. But 4 has now overlapped into what would be first wave price territory for that idea. That idea is invalidated, it's discarded, leaving only this wave count at the monthly chart level. So the implications of a new high above this point here were extremely bullish for my analysis for oil. It's at this point that I discard a bearish wave count and accept that oil is probably in a new upward trend to make new all-time highs, probably a multi year to possibly even multi-decade upward trend. Attention now turns to the structure, actually just before I go there I just want to draw your attention to this interesting nine wave triangle for the Elliott Wave geeks amongst us. This isn't a very common pattern but all of the subdivisions fit really really well and one of the interesting things to note is both F, G, H and I all fall short of the triangle trend lines. I need to move D over here, that's not sitting quite right, sorry about that. And so the most common point for E waves of triangles, the more common 5 wave Elliott wave triangle, the most common point for those to end is undershooting the AC trend line. This one has a slight overshoot, but then the final sub waves of the triangle do all undershoot the triangle trend lines. That's a really interesting pattern to note. I have seen another in my research, I've seen another nine wave triangle on the gold market and that also had F, G, H and I all undershooting the triangle trend lines. So this is a not very common and really interesting Elliott wave pattern. Okay, let's have a look now at the structure of super cycle wave three. I'm labeling the high up here an impulse labeled super cycle one. The big huge zigzag for oil is super cycle two and now looking at super cycle 3, it may only subdivide as an impulse and it has to move far enough above the end of super cycle 1 to allow room for a subsequent fourth wave correction, a huge fourth wave correction counterpart to the second wave to unfold and remain above first wave price territory. So the final target for the bull market for oil to be a multi-year to multi-decade bull market is well above this point here. At the start of super cycle 3 we're looking for an impulse to complete now for cycle 1, subdividing 1, 2 and 3 is incomplete, then we'll have 4 and 5. When cycle 1 is complete, cycle 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 26.06. Let's take a look at the weekly chart now, we're going to look at cycle 1 only, where it begins down here, here's primary 1, an impulse, primary 2 a zigzag, Primary 3, an incomplete impulse, it may only subdivide as an impulse. So far we have intermediate 1, an impulse. Intermediate 2, a deep double zigzag. Intermediate 3, an impulse with no Fibonacci ratio to intermediate wave 1. It's a bit longer than 1.618, the length of intermediate 1. And when there's no Fibonacci ratio exhibited for, for a third wave to its counterpart first wave, that tells us we are more likely to see a Fibonacci ratio for the fifth wave to either or most likely to the first or possibly to the third and so when the fourth wave is complete I can add to this target calculation at intermediate degree as well at that stage it may widen to a small zone or it may change. 
Intermediate 4 is likely to exhibit alternation in structure and depth with Intermediate 2, so far it looks like it's a relatively shallow flat correction, most likely. It can't move into Wave 1 price territory. Intermediate 1 has its price extreme at 55.24. This has happened also at the monthly chart level. We've got a fifth wave here, which has moved beyond the end of the third wave, and so it is not truncated, but it hasn't managed to move beyond the price extreme of the fourth wave immediately prior to it. The fourth wave here is a running contracting triangle. That's certainly not rare. It's reasonably common for triangles to do this. A running triangle is when the B wave moves beyond the start of the A wave. The fact that the fifth wave here did not move beyond the price extreme of the fourth wave does not mean it's truncated. It does not have to do that to avoid a truncation. It only has to move beyond the end of the third wave. It's just a little technical difference there for you for Elliott Wave. Let's take a look now at some daily charts. We're going to look at different possible structures for this fourth wave. There are more than 23 possible structures a fourth wave can take. We can eliminate zigzags with this new price extreme, and that was the least likely considering the second wave is a double zigzag. And so the fourth wave is most likely to be a flat combination or triangle. Let's take a look at some of those options now at the daily chart level, where three ends up here, this point here. This is the most likely wave count I expect for intermediate wave 4, an expanded flat correction, subdividing 3, 3, 5. And if it continues and ends in another 1 to 2 weeks, it'll be pretty close to a Fibonacci 13 weeks in duration. Minor wave B here is an expanded flat, subdividing 3, 3, 5 with a rather long C wave. Sometimes this happens. The subdivisions are pretty good. It does have a good fit. Of all my daily charts I'm going to show you in this video, this one has the best overall fit and a reasonably good look. Now looking at the structure of minor C, it's likely to be a 5 wave impulse with an impulse for minute 1, a little shallow and relatively quick double zigzag for minute 2, minute 3 now probably beginning as an impulse with 1, 2 and 3 incomplete. It has to move far enough beyond the end of 1 to allow room for a little fourth wave correction to unfold and remain below first wave price territory. Have another fourth wave correction, an end of minute 3, another fourth wave correction, and then finally an end to minus C. So it's not going to move in a straight line. There will be consolidations and bounces along the way, but I'm expecting overall downward movement to complete minor wave C. At 61.12, intermediate 4 would reach 0.382 times length of intermediate 3. At 61.22, minor C would equal 1.618 times the length of minor A. So we've got a 10 cent target zone calculated at 2 degrees. It should have a reasonable probability. It's all the same to this point here. And now I've moved the degree of labelling within this down one degree. It's possible that minor 4 could be an even longer lasting flat and that this flat here could be just minor wave A. And so if we see a 3, 3, 5 structure complete, when we have the low and the end of this 5 wave structure down, I'll be judging whether or not that could be intermediate 4 in its entirety or it could just be wave A of intermediate 4. We'll be looking at the weekly chart, we'll be looking at proportion, we'll be looking at how it sits in the channel, and we'll be looking at technical analysis to try and judge whether or not the consolidation could be over there. It could be longer lasting, it could continue for a Fibonacci 21 weeks, but I think that's a bit less likely. The structure is the same, I'm still labelling this as a 5 wave impulse and complete 1, 2, we need 3, 4, 5. And the third wave itself may only be an impulse. One, two, three, four, five. The target is pretty much the same. So it's just the degree of labelling here that makes a difference. Now it's all the same to this point here. And I've moved the degree of labelling back up one degree. But now I'm going to consider a possible double combination for intermediate wave four. We could have the first structure in a double combination. Could be a complete zigzag labelled minor W. The double could be joined by a 3 in the opposite direction, itself an expanded flat labelled minor x. x waves within double combinations, just like b waves within flats, can make new price extremes beyond the start of the first structure. Here we could be looking at a flat correction now for minor y, because by an extremely wide margin, 
and the two most common structures in double combinations are one zigzag and one flat. So let's look for a flat correction for minor y, subdividing 3, 3, 5. We could be looking at a zigzag down for minute a, subdividing 5, 3, 5. So how this next wave down unfolds, what structure it looks most likely as, is going to start to give a strong clue as to what structure intermediate 4 may be and whether or not it's over. So I'll be paying careful attention to Elliott wave structure. Within minute wave A, minuet B, if it's not over here and continues further, as it could, it could be an expanded flat, 3, 3, 5. If it does continue further, it can't move beyond the start of A, above 75.26, because A was a five-wave structure. If we see a zigzag down complete, then we'll be looking for a very strong upward bounce for minute B to reach at least 90% the length of minute A, and minute B within a flash of minor y can make a new price extreme beyond the start of A, at that stage the invalidation point will no longer apply. It's all the same to this point here, and now, again, I've just moved the degree of labelling here down one degree. Still looking at a combination for intermediate 4, but instead of the first structure being over here, what if it's continuing further as a flat correction, subdividing 3, 3, 5. Now we need to see a 5 wave structure down for minute c complete, to complete a flat for minor w. And that could be the first structure in a double combination for intermediate 4. We could then have an x wave, a strong upward bounce, which could make a new high beyond the start of w. And then the second structure could be a zigzag for minor wave y. Again, if we see a 3, 3, 5 complete, then a flat correction could be complete. It could be intermediate 4 in its entirety, which I think is most likely, and that's why that's the first daily chart I'm presenting to you. But we do have to consider the possibility it could just be wave W of a double flat or double combination. I'd expect a double combination because double flats in my research are very, very unusual. Double combinations are pretty common though. The final idea, which really doesn't have a very good fit at all, and I'm probably going to discard it in another week because it just has a horrible look as well. We could possibly be seeing a triangle for intermediate 4, double zigzag for A, single zigzag for B, now a single zigzag down for C, subdividing 5, 3, 5. B could continue further, and it could be an expanded flat, 3, 3, 5, if it does continue, it can't move beyond the start of A above 75.26. I'm considering possibly an ending expanding diagonal currently unfolding for a little 5 down. That's possible. We'll see how this one unfolds next week. C, for a triangle, may not move beyond the end of A, not for any, not for a contracting or barrier triangle. I'm not going to consider an expanding triangle because they are extremely rare in my research. I've actually not found even one. So I'm not going to consider that at all. C can't move beyond the end of A, below 63.60. At that point, I would discard, completely discard the idea of a triangle. When C is done, D is zigzag up, shouldn't move beyond the end of B, or not reasonably above B, above 75.26. And then E would most likely fall short of the AC trend line. Choppy overlapping movement in an ever-decreasing range. This is another one of the problems with this wave count. We have to see this as a zigzag, and it looks best as an impulse. I think this wave count looks forced. I don't think it has a good fit. I don't think this is the right wave count. But let's consider all possibilities and not discard them, because sometimes the Elliott wave structures don't have a really great look. We can't draw any conclusions for the month of August because it's incomplete. The conclusion that I've drawn for the last month of July was that overall there was downward movement. The balance of volume for July was down. It didn't have support from volume. It looks like a consolidation within an ongoing upward trend. The bigger picture for oil at this point is extremely bullish. On balance volume has made a new high above this point here. Price has not managed to make a new high above this point here yet. We on balance volume leads, price is likely to follow. On balance volume at the monthly chart level for oil is extremely bullish. It certainly does look like oil is in an upward trend which will reach above this point way back up here. 
RSI is neutral, there is plenty of room for this upward trend to continue and MACD at the monthly chart level is full ball bullish. There will be corrections and pullbacks and on the way, trends do not move in perfectly straight lines. Sometimes they can for a while though when they are very strong in the middle of a third wave. At the daily chart level, the strongest support from volume is recently for a downward day, so let's expect downward movement likely to continue next week. Here's our next areas of support, about 64.10 and a little bit below that. And that fits quite nicely with expectations from those Elliott Wave counts, which expect the downward swing to continue. ADX reached very extreme for the prior upward trend. It was well, not very, very extreme. It was extreme. The black ADX line was above both directional lines, but it didn't manage to reach above 35. So not very extreme, but quite extreme. This big consolidation, this sideways chop, has managed to pull ADX well down from that extreme reading. There is again room for ADX to, to develop a new trend. It's a lagging indicator though. At this stage, it's essentially flat. It's telling us there's a consolidation. The DX trend lines have been whipsawing and ADX has been overall mostly declining. ATR is declining now, telling us that price is consolidating. It has been consolidating for a couple of weeks. RSI is neutral. Room for price to rise or fall. Stochastics reached oversold here. Back in neutral territory. Not quite oversold. There's room again for price to continue lower. When ADX tells us that this upward trend is very ex is extreme, and then ADX tells us the extreme trend is probably over, we then use resistance and support in conjunction with stochastics to tell us when one swing ends and the next should begin within a resulting consolidation. So we have a swing from resistance to support up to higher resistance. So this is our new resistance area up here about 75.5. Support down here about 63.5. We could see an overshoot of that support, resistance and support when price has these big swings within consolidations can be overshot only for price to turn around and move back within the consolidation zone and that's one reason why trading those big swings in consolidations is so very very risky. So I'm expecting a swing from resistance down to support for it to only end when price is at support and stochastics is oversold at the same time. So let's look for stochastics to reach into oversold and then when it's there possibly to exhibit some bullish divergence with price and for price to continue down to support. Now that general idea mostly supports the Elliott Wave count. It expects downward movement next week is most likely. When price moves, here's another reason why it's really hard to make a profit when price is in consolidations. It tends to move in really choppy, overlapping movement. Now when price trends, it's not in a straight line. There are pullbacks and bounces within downward and upward trends. But when price is consolidating, those whipsaws and those big bounces and pullbacks within those swings in a consolidation are more exaggerated than the pullbacks and bounces within a trend often are. And so don't expect it to move in a straight line. That's another reason why trying to trade a consolidating market is so ridiculously difficult. Elliott Wave does try and give us potential pathways of how price can move within consolidations, but the problem there is there are so many different corrective structures possible, you will always have alternate wave counts when price is in a correction. So there is no technical analysis method of which I am aware that will tell you exactly how price is going to move within a consolidation. So you have to exert patience. Let's watch on balance volume really carefully next week. There's a new short term range. The resistance line is pretty much horizontal. It's not too long held. It's only been tested three times. There's a little bit of technical significance there. The support line's only tested two or three times. It's a shorter held and it's got a bit of a slope, so less technical significance here. But if we see a break above resistance, I'd expect the downward swing is over for now. If we see a break below support, I'd have more confidence in downward movement to support for price. RSI is neutral, room for price to rise or fall. We've gone over stochastics and Bollinger Bands contracting. That's typical behaviour during a consolidation.
That's all from me with your oil analysis. I hope that all our members are having a fantastic weekend.